There are three types of mouse. First is a house mouse. It must be going extinct because I haven't seen one in what 40 years. Then there's another mouse called Mickey Mouse. I haven't seen that one either. Even as a child, I never saw an actual Mickey Mouse cartoon. And then there is Computer Mouse. I hope this one is not going extinct, but maybe it is. I was shocked to hear that uh, Apple wasn't the first to market the mouse. The first commercially available mouse was from Logitech, 1982. The same year, Microsoft brought out a version of MS-DOS Microsoft Word that was mouse compatible. And only two years later, 1984, Apple came up with a Mac mouse single button. All along, I was under the impression that Apple even invented the mouse. Learned that actually it was uh, Xerox. And everybody copied from Xerox. Apple set such a high bar for design that it hasn't changed in about 10 years. Here is the one from the Apple store today. This is called the Magic Mouse. Before this one, there was this one. Then this one, this one, this one, this one, and then this one. This has the same kind of features as you see in a lethal shark. How about a dolphin, a beautiful sleek dolphin? This mouse is really not suitable for 3D programs such as CAD, BIM and the like. For those you really need a three button mouse with the middle one being a scroll wheel. Only those will allow you to pick things up, rotate them around successfully and so on. In a way, Steve Jobs gave birth to the concept of the modern mouse. That could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? Paradoxically, Steve Jobs was also the person who declared the death of the mouse. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. It works like magic. And that, of course, resulted in all the different devices that use this as the pointing device. On the computers, too. Apple was first to create these huge trackpads, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, replacing the concept of the mouse. Then came the touch screen. Then came this kind of trackpad. So why do we need a mouse? Steve Jobs was right. This is the best pointing device. Oh, by the way, the plural of computer mouse can be either mice or mouses. Can we agree to that? By the way, it's written over here. This is our one and only example of the good old fashioned wired mouse from Microsoft has all the basic features and nothing more. Large, fits into the hand, left and right click, scroll wheel, push button as well, but no left and right. It's a laser mouse, low DPI. Once you've seen a wired mouse, you've seen them all. Successful species are not always the most beautiful, but the most functional. Everything you want is done the right way. A bump that fits right into your palm and it's very comfortable to move around. Left and right buttons press with a reassuring click. The scroll wheel is always smooth. It not only has a press button but us actually goes left and right as well. It's a laser mouse, high DPI. It has an on and off button, again cutting off the power for complete assurance. It has a chamber for dongle, a single battery that lasts almost a year. This mouse from France is a hybrid between this Microsoft wired mouse and this Logitech wireless mouse. Same shape as that, same features and functions except it doesn't have the left and right movement of the scroll wheel. So how is it hybrid? It has a special superpower. It has a cable, which you can pull out, and uh, one less thing to worry about. Here's another one, with the same feature. Not as well executed as this one, right? And it's a mini size, so it's designed for laptops. But still, 
The big hunchback is a big lump inside the laptop bag. Here's another generic mouse. She's trying to improve on that. Nice slick design. It actually reminds me of uh, those solar cars with the solar panels over the top here and the head of the driver popping out over there. You remember those? This is from Microsoft. So Microsoft innovated and said, let's forget about those dongles. We connect you through Bluetooth. Press that button, pair with the computer, and you go. However, in the early days of Bluetooth, it was a pain in the neck. So, although the Bluetooth idea was interesting, this particular subspecies of mouse went extinct. The dongle is still the dominant mouse connection to the computer. But the design of that was quite interesting. Dell was another mouse maker using the same kind of aesthetic, also looking like those solar cars, with this uh, silver trim, which is borrowed from the XPS series of Dell computers, to a button mouse with an extra button on the right, which is programmable for something or other. Lift this off, batteries, and the connection dongle right here. You lose this, this becomes useless because you can't get those as a commodity. The maker of this mouse came up with another idea. How about this? Let's innovate this way. The same surface, not split into two, but you can click one side or another side and it acts as two buttons. Okay, that's interesting. And instead of the scroll wheel, what if we do it virtually, almost like a trackpad? Run your finger on it, like this. You can also click it. How about that? Also, additional button on the left, additional button on the right. Was this innovation successful in the evolution of the species? Not really. For a while, Microsoft was very keen on being seen as an innovator in design. So they came up with this beauty, Microsoft Arc Mouse. So it starts off as a slick, flat thing that you can put into the laptop without a lump. And then when you want to use it as a mouse, you curve this, it becomes a real mouse. Two proper buttons, but no scroll wheel, because that would have ruined the design. So instead of the positive feeling of this scroll wheel, we have one of these finger things, finger scrolls, and then there's a front button and a back button. No positive feedback. Not entirely successful and not made of very good materials either. Connection is via Bluetooth. This appears to be a good one. It picks up some of the best ideas of several other mouse species. One, it's sleek. It's low profile, doesn't create a huge lump in your laptop bag. It has two proper buttons. It has a proper scroll wheel, positive feel, and a press button action. What about the connections? Okay, let's take all the good ideas from the previous experiments and use them in one. It has Bluetooth and just in case, it has a dongle as well. Bluetooth doesn't work on your computer, gives you trouble. You pop this dongle in, it works. Sony created a series of absolutely beautiful mouses like this one. This was my own mouse on my own Vio. It's almost like it's inspired by some very sleek cars. I would say something like Audi R8 or Audi TT. And look, it has a sunroof as well. Beautiful. The spring action. Metal. Two proper buttons. Proper scroll wheel and press button. Positive action. So did this one propagate in the evolution of the species? Not really. 
connection via Bluetooth. Always unreliable at the time. Nowadays it's better, but back then very unreliable. When it didn't work, you're stuck. Sony created many other models of absolutely beautiful mouses, like this one. Beautiful. Look at the lines, the sloping front, sloping back, like a beautiful ocean liner. Also very ergonomic, the sloping sides, you hold it, positive feeling, scroll wheel, press button, very nice materials also, connection via Bluetooth only, no dongle, no dongle to stow away here. Logitech, the maker of the most generic, the most successful mouse, but arguably the most boring mouse, was innovating as well with this beauty. It has its own dock, it's rechargeable, one of very few mouses which are rechargeable, just like in a mobile phone, just pop it in there, pick it up and use it. No need to change the battery. Aesthetics of a, I would say, a killer whale, don't you think? Killer whale that jumps out of the water, goes back in, the same kind of aesthetics. So what's the superpower of this particular mouse? Just like this Sony, it works on the mouse mat, left and right button. It has a finger controlled replacement for a scroll wheel. And it can be lifted off the table and used in the air. So it's an air mouse, it's called an air mouse. That's another one of the extinct species of mouse. But we celebrate it for its innovation. Let's have a look at this one. Hmm, interesting. Very thin, very small. It has two proper buttons. And it has a scroll wheel on the side, which you can run with your thumb. Not exactly ergonomic, but sort of functional. It's so thin, it doesn't have batteries. So how does this work? Ah, this gives it away. So inside of this little pouch, there's this. <coughs> a standard mini USB cable, which is retractable as well. You plug that in there and plug this into any laptop, ready to work. And now we're going to look at the top five weirdest mouses that we have. Number five. The uh, X9 Pro mouse. It has the uh, aesthetics of a racing bike, right? It's actually extremely comfortable to use in the traditional way with a proper positive cable connection. It has buttons everywhere. Button here, button, 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 and button, a scroll wheel, and a press button, and two other buttons here. I've only ever used these two and this one but it is a beauty number four weirdest mouse does that look like a mouse 3d connection I guess what this is is called a space mouse so you put it in on the table it's very heavy and um, you move it around like a joystick, front, back, left, right, you can click it and on top of that you can rotate right, left and up, pull up. So the way this works is it's designed for three-dimensional software such as uh, SketchUp for example. You can grab elements on the screen and you can move them around in space, rotate them move them up, down, forward, backward, and so on. You can manipulate them as if you're holding the object itself. Interesting concept, right? There's a button here, button there, it's a left and right mouse, mouse button. 
mini USB connection connects to your computer. Number three, weirdest mouse. Look at this. This has the aesthetics of uh, a strange frog. How does this work? Okay, let me tell you. First look at the back. This is magnetically attached. It has two functions. One is, is a connection point. So you plug this into your computer. It communicates with this just like uh, any old Logitech. At the same time, there's a USB connection. It has two USB connections here. You attach this magnetically. You plug this into the computer and it recharges the mouse. There are no battery required. Okay, during the use, this is not here. And this is a normal mouse. You run it around, hold it with your fingers, not with a whole hand, with your fingers. So where's the left button and right button then? Left button is on top, right button is at the bottom. So left, right. You have to mentally juggle it around, left, right. Where's the scroll wheel? It's on the side, here, there. So you can go this way, left, right, scroll wheel. But the end result is a very strange mouse. Worth preserving, right? Number two strangest mouse. Look at the aesthetics of this. To me, it looks like those uh, strange Formula One cars with a long nose and a wheel on the side. Although it misses the wheel on the other side, so how is it going to drive? Underneath it has this dongle which you plug into the computer and it connects. So that part is easy. Inside of this, there isn't much room, is there? And yet, there's two full-size AAA batteries there. They've squeezed all that in. So it's a proper mouse. Left mouse button is this one. Right mouse button is that one. And the scroll wheel is on the side. Similar to this one, right? Somebody had this idea of switching left and right, left and right mouse buttons and putting the scroll wheel on the right. So that's one innovation. That's another innovation. I would say ergonomically, this was actually more successful than this one because you can hold this properly with your hand, run it around. Finally, the number one weirdest mouse is our Mogo mouse. See how thin and slick it is? Beautiful. This goes back 15 years and yet the aesthetics are so modern, this could be designed yesterday. How does it possibly work? Okay. Since it's so flat, it's not practical on its own. So what you do is turn it around and pop this over and that gives it the angle for a proper mouse. It has real left and right buttons and a virtual scroll wheel over here. In addition, over here it has a button for laser pointing device. Remember what those were for? For projectors in meeting rooms. We don't have those anymore. We have these 85 inch TVs. Back then we had laser everywhere and its connection is via Bluetooth. It has a real on and off button over here. So where is the battery? Battery is built in. How do you charge that battery? Is via here. This used to be called a PC card. PC cards used to look like this and laptops had a port for putting these in. Let me show you. I'll be back in a second. This is a PC port. You see the shape of this? The sh same shape as this. That's a blank, of course. You could buy different PC cards with different functions, like additional memory or a mouse. So, if you're brave enough to carry something two or three kilos like this in your laptop bag, 
of course you needed a very slick mouse to put inside it strange isn't it so congratulations to Mogo the designers of the weirdest most beautiful and the strangest mouse to summarize these are our weirdest mouses five four three two and one the winner all of these go to the shelves of the tech heritage museum to be preserved forever we have technology it didn't work <laughs>